What's going on guys? Hope y'all had an awesome Thanksgiving. As you can tell, I am not in my own garage. I'm at Abby's parents' house and uh, we're here for the holidays, but that does not mean that you guys are not gonna get a Sunday build video. Unfortunately, it's not an R3 video, but hopefully you guys uh, still enjoy it. We are gonna be working on the R6. Uh, I brought it with me, rented a U-Haul trailer, and obviously can't bring a uh, full trailer full of R3 parts. That would just be crazy. Uh, so I brought the R6 with the brand new, fancy Louis Moto seat. Boom. That's really dark. Anyways, uh, so I brought the R6 to do something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while, and I've actually had this. Uh, I just haven't done the install for it, and that is putting some braided brake lines on that bike. I've got an awesome kit that uh, Spiegler sent for me. They make some awesome, awesome, awesome brake line kits. I also got this awesome new uh, air compressor that I've been wanting to get for ages. Not. Not like that specific air compressor, but you guys know that I've been wanting an air compressor for probably like two or three years. I just never bought one because the number of times that I actually need one is slim to none. But uh, I figured now is probably as good a time as any. There was a Black Friday sale on it, 99 bucks uh, for this one right here with practically perfect five star reviews. So that's one I got and then uh, just a little uh, accessory kit should should be good. I don't know. I don't I, I really don't know anything about air compressors, but it had good reviews, so I bought it. Uh, you guys can argue down in the comments about which air compressor I should have gotten. I just wanted something small and cheap, but you know, still okay. So I got that. The reason I got it is because I actually wanted to use this uh, brake bleeding kit that I also picked up from uh, Harbor Freight. This one actually hooks up to an air compressor. See, it's a pneumatic brake fluid bleeder. And there was one um, on Amazon that I wanted to get. It's slightly cheaper than this and supposedly better, but I, I kind of needed this ASAP, so. I picked that one up, should still be good, and uh, should make things a lot easier paired with the air compressor. That way we can drain everything out really easily, and uh, if we have any problems getting the brakes bled with new fluid, that should help out as well. But I'll toss links to everything that I'm using today, the, uh, the air compressor, the hose, the accessory kit, the brake line kit from Spiegler and that uh, brake bleeding kit. I'll put that all down in the description along with uh, a link to the playlist for all the videos of building on the R6. So if you guys are interested in any of that, make sure you check out those. But let's get started. So as I mentioned, Spiegler sent me one of their brake line kits and they make some of the nicest brake lines that I've ever seen. I didn't go any crazy colors. I just went with a uh, smoked brake line with uh, these titanium, probably can't see them very well. You'll be able to see them better once we get them out. I think it's their titanium banjo bolts and uh, fittings, so should be super, super nice. As I mentioned when I did the seat install, I'm trying to not go crazy with colors all over the place. Gold is gonna be my accent color, but I don't want it all over the place. I just want it tastefully in a few different places. I probably could have done it on the banjo bolts as well, but I don't want the color of the brake lines to be the center of the attention on the bike. I want them to look nice, so when you see the brake lines, you're like, oh, those are some good brake lines. But I don't want the colors to be distracting from the overall look of the bike. So that's why I went with just kind of like a dark black theme on the brake lines. But as you can see, everything is labeled here so you know what place to put all of these. Open it up, you guys can see what we got in the kit. We've got the, uh, the lines. Now, in case you're wondering why you should replace your brake lines. Well, when you buy your bike factory, at least, 99% of the bikes that you're gonna buy. Uh, they come with rubber hoses. See the uh, rubber hoses down here? Well, maybe, kinda dark. You can see the rubber hoses back here. And the problem with those is that hydraulic brakes work on pressure. That pressure with the fluid causes the calipers to push those brake pads into your rotor and help you stop. But with the rubber hoses, those fluids can press out on those rubber hoses and you lose some of that pressure going directly to the caliper. That's where the steel braided brake lines come in. You can see the uh, steel braided 
lines underneath here. And the way that helps is this is a lot more rigid and doesn't allow that fluid to press out on these lines, at least not nearly as much as they can on the rubber hoses. So all that pressure coming through the lines goes directly to the caliper and you get a lot better brake feel and you can get a lot better of a pull on those brakes. In case you haven't noticed, I moved to the backyard. Check out my setup. Freaking pool view. Got the bike set up and uh, watching three different football games. <laughs> if this isn't the life, I don't know what is. I drained out all the fluid with the uh, brake bleeding kit. By the way, this thing is kind of magical. Uh, it took me a while to get all of this set up. I've never used an air compressor before, except for the one time when we did the uh, Cheetah Blaster for the rear wheel on the Ruckus. So I got all the fluid drained out, and right now I'm taking off the uh, old lines. The interesting thing here, as I mentioned before, I have ABS on this bike. This is a speed sensor right here, so it gets that information so it can gauge whether it needs to uh, engage or lessen the engagement of the brakes uh, when you're riding. So this makes it a little bit dif difficult and it goes to these fittings that you can barely see back here. Here's what we got. So we got all the uh, banjo bolts, the crush washers, and uh, here are the little fittings. So I believe these two mount in the rear and this connects the lines to the uh, hard lines. But the nice thing is Spiegler provides these incredibly detailed instructions with pictures in color. Let me show you what we got so far. So I got the uh, line that was back here and then the line that goes to the master cylinder, the rear master cylinder right here that connects there. Easiest way to do this is to use an adjustable wrench to hold the uh, little 90 degree adapter things. I don't even know what they're called, but they connect to these hard lines and just unscrew these first. And then once you lift those out, it's really easy to get everything else out. So what I have here is the ones from the Spiegler kit. So these. They call them, what are they called? 90 degree manifolds. Okay, so these right here connect to this bracket. This this bracket came stock, but what I had to do is uh, bend this bracket right here flat so it's flush with the rest of the bracket. And that's, that's in the instru instructions right here. It shows you what to bend. And then we'll connect the hard lines into this and then the lines into each of these. One for the master cylinder, one for the caliper. And my Wisconsin Badgers. 31 to zero, freaking awesome. Good morning guys, we're getting back to work on the brake job right now. I have the little adapter pieces, you can see them right there. All of this is done, my battery died as I was doing that and I had no light when I was finishing this so it wasn't even worth getting another battery to put in. This is all done, these hard lines are tightened down, at least I believe they are. I'm not quite sure how far they need to be tightened down but I can't tighten them anymore. This is a really tough spot to work in. It's super, super tight. So the next step here is to get these rear lines put in place. All right, so I'm having a weird problem right here. So this spot for this banjo bolt does not seem to like taking one of the banjo bolts. So here are the new ones. I start screwing this in, screw it in a little, and then it stops. So what I did was I tried the original banjo bolts, like the ones with the original lines. Goes, 
freaking all the way in. So then I decided to try it on the rear with the uh, new ones. And if I put this in here, that just threads right in, no problem. So I'm not quite sure why the front isn't going in. I don't know if the, the threading is different on this little mounting point for the uh, hydraulic switch for the brake pedal, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the stock one. My only concern is that it's a little bit shorter than the new ones, because the new ones are a little bit longer because the actual banjo bolt is thicker. But the stock one works, and this works on the rear, so I'll just use the stock one there, the new one on the rear, and uh, try to figure out that problem later. Spiegler includes this really nice tool to rotate the uh, actual fittings if you need to for them to align correctly with the actual hole for the banjo bolt. So all you have to do is put it on here, get some vice grips, and you can use this little rod and rotate. are all complete. Got them routed all nicely. Everything fits together well. Uh, as it says in the instructions, the uh, front grommet on the wheel sensor needs to be either removed or moved. It's got a stupidly strong glue. You can see uh, I left a little nub from that grommet on here and then uh, just use a provided zip tie to attach that instead. But uh, everything else is freaking perfect. And uh, no problems with that banjo bolt. Now, for the front. All the lines are removed and uh, what I'm gonna have to do is there's a bracket right there that I'm gonna have to straighten out just like I did in the rear so that uh, the new little manifold thing can fit flush back there and uh, then we'll start connecting things up I think it'll be easier than the rear was well story of my life camera overheated I was planning on just having like a time lapse of me finishing the build and uh, yeah my camera overheated and I didn't get any of the rest of it but it's done the this was, not gonna lie, a lot harder than the rear. <laughs> this whole assembly under here was kind of difficult. It's got great documentation, so it's pretty easy to understand how everything goes. It's just such a small space, and uh, I don't have small hands, so it's a little bit difficult. But we got all the lines perfectly lined up, front, rear, left, right. I uh, double-checked left to right. Um, full lock, turning the wheel and nothing touches, great clearance. And uh, all the way up here to the master cylinder, very nice. And uh, it's done, aside from putting new fluid in. That's the only thing that I haven't done. Unfortunately, I have no time because we're heading back to Austin now. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to do is put new fluid in, bleed the brakes, and we should be good to go. So we got the trailer, gonna load it up. And uh, tomorrow I'll probably bring you guys a special short little video of bleeding the brakes. We'll be good to go with that. Huge thanks to Spiegler for sending out that kit. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll put that down in the description along with everything else that I use, the bleeder kit, the uh, compressor, and anything else that I can figure out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button if you liked the video or if it helped you out. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subbed already. And I will see you guys in the next video.